I wanted to provide a short overview of an invention I've had rattling around in my head for about a decade now. Um, it's for a rotary valve system um, and the design prevents seizure but also maintains sealing. For a rotary valve to work the valve must seal and the system must not seize. And this is where a lot of a lot of other developers have fallen down. Um, the design is extremely simple and it, it works like this. So this is the piston and the bore. The rotor pulley, which is the equivalent of the camshaft pulley, um, acts on a helix and the helix is 25 degrees and the reason it's 25 degrees is so that it back drives, that is when the rotor is forced to the right this can spin freely and allow the rotor to travel to the right. The way the system works is as the rotor is pushed to the right um, by these springs and the spring force in this case of 680 newtons which is the force, the combustion force that is trying to force the rotor to the left during operation. The rotor runs against a bush, in this case this will probably be a leaded bronze bush with a nitride um, hardened steel rotor and um, as, as the two run against each other um, a torque is produced. The torque is the radius from the um, axis of rotation to the um, surface contact area and um, the friction coefficient and as that torque increases, so if the rotor tends to seize the torque to drive the rotor increases which means the axial force produced by this helix pulls the rotor to the left. As the rotor travels to the left um, a reduction in pressure is produced and the reduction in pressure reduces the driving torque for the rotor and the springs overcome the helix angle and push the rotor to the right. These adjustments will be minute but it will provide sealing and prevent sealing for all um, operation. The geometry you're looking at here is designed for a, hundred, a Honda GX160 engine, a stationary engine, just as a proof of concept to see if the idea would work. The, when I did the calculation for the torque to drive the rotor, you have to take into account the helix angle, um, but it's actually extremely low, so it's 0 0.023 newton um, newton meters to drive the rotor, and that equates to 21 watts at 1,000 rpm, or 105 watts at 5,000 rpm. One of the reasons um, a rotary valve would be preferable to a poppet valve is there's no hot exhaust valve. There's a large area here of this rotor which is um, rotating around, but there's no hot exhaust valve that's difficult to cool. And as such, that enables this design to run a significantly higher compression ratio of 17 to 1, um, opposed to a much more conventional compression. I don't know what the compression for the GX160 is, but it's probably 8 or 10 to 1. Um, the valve area is significantly increased. You get a, a large unobstructed opening instead of um, a poppet valve being in the way. The valve area for this design would be 1,326 square millimeters with no obstruction compared to on the Honda GX160 it would be uh, 490 square millimeters that's a 25 millimeter diameter valve so that increases the valve area by 2.7 by a factor of 2.7 
the same is the case for the exhaust and the last point um, worth noting is the simplicity of the and the manufacturability of the system so no head gasket is necessarily required the cylinder and head could be cast as one um, and I think it could be a, an improvement of sorts. Thank you for, for watching and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts.